In this video, we're going to do a little bit of image editing using a software application called Luminar AI that I'm really excited to share with you. This video is sponsored by Skylum. Luminar AI is a really unique image editor and it's got some really interesting things that it does. So first of all, what is Luminar AI? If you watch this channel, you've seen me talk about Luminar 4 several times this year. Luminar 4 is also made by Skylum. Luminar AI has nothing to do with Luminar 4. This is an entirely brand new application and it's built from the ground up around what we're calling calling a results-driven workflow. So what it does is it leverages artificial intelligence completely under the hood. It's built from the ground up using AI. And what this does is it allows you to remove a lot of the repetitive, mundane, and kind of boring tasks that we end up doing when we edit images a lot, and it gets you results very quickly. Luminar AI solves one of the quintessential problems with image editing in that one, image editing doesn't have to be boring, it doesn't have to be tedious, it doesn't have to be slow process. You can get really good results really quickly with the technology that they've leveraged here. So there's a lot of technical stuff I could go into, but I think the best way to start is I have an image here. And what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through the process here with Luminar AI, show you the workflow. And I want you to note that within just a couple clicks and a couple slider adjustments, I can get this image looking exactly like I want it. So this image is a portrait that I shot actually in Florida a few years ago, and this was done in the morning. And I, I'm happy with the way it's exposed. I'm happy with the way it came out, but there's some things I wanna do to it. I think it needs to be a little bit punchier. I think the contrast needs to be adjusted somewhat. I like the light, the way it comes from behind her, but we do have a little bit of a blue cast. It's real subtle, but I want to be able to get rid of that uh, just because we're in a little bit of a mixed white balance because she's in the shade. And then I want to do some retouching in the face here. And I think this is really important too. Her eyes get a little bit lost. She's got beautiful eyes, but just because of the scale in the image and the dynamic range of the camera, so on and so forth, I think I could bring out some color in there just a little bit. Also, and this is not her at all. This is completely completely the lens that I shot this with and the angle that I'm shooting her at. Uh, I think we could do a little bit of shaping, not only in the body, but also in the face and make that slightly more flattering. But uh, it sounds like a lot of work. And traditionally, if you were going to go into an image editor, it would be a lot of work, especially when you get into shaping and stuff like that. It's a little more than just applying curves adjustments. I'm going to show you how Luminar AI makes this really quick and easy. So the first thing to understand about Luminar AI is that it is object aware. In fact, when I go under the templates tab, which is where we're going to start in Luminar AI. It gives you some recommendations here on the right side. It says for this photo, and it knows that it's a portrait. So if I bring a landscape image into this, it's going to give me different suggestions for this photo. And so if you don't want any of those suggestions, you can scroll down and work from whatever you want. And there's a lot of stuff from ocean scenes to wildlife to macro to nature to you name it. But we're going to stick with portraits for now, keep things simple. And I'm just going to go into easy portraits. And when I go here, this is a collection of templates. And each one of these is going to have a slightly different look to it. And the thing you need to understand about templates in the context of Luminar AI is these are not like applying a LUT or an Instagram filter or something like that. You can apply LUTs. It's part of the process. But what it does is it makes guesses based on what it's seeing in your image. And so different images will have slightly different results with that same look, but it's much more powerful than just applying a filter to something. So I'm going to use this as a starting point. And the bottom one down here is low key. And I let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and double click that. And wow, really quickly, that did an impressive job of cleaning up my contrast, my color cast. So we'll do a quick before and after. Anytime you're in here and you want to see before and after, you have two options up on the top bar here. I can do a slider and I can click and drag that around to see the before and after changes. Or there's a little eye here. And if I just kind of click and hold, you'll see the before. And when I release, that shows you after. So this got me like with one click probably about 80% of the way there. I do want to make a few more refinements and that's how the system works. You're going to start with a template. This allows you to work really quickly and efficiently and then you can just move a couple sliders and make some adjustments. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go now to the edit tab at the top of the screen. I'm going to select that and you're going to see various tabs here and palettes that allow you to do certain things. Now, if I go into essentials here, you're going to see that some of these are highlighted. So for instance, composition, light is highlighted, colors highlighted. If I go into to portrait, not only do we see a little dot next to it, but when I go down here, let's close this up for a second, you're gonna see face is highlighted. And that's what the adjustments uh, that you can edit that were made from that template, that's where they are. And so it makes it easy to see what Luminar did. And so if something's a little too intense or you wanna undo it or you wanna just pull it back a little bit, you can see where those edits are or we can do some of our own. I'm going to refine some of these a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm gonna enlarge this so we can just work on her face here. And let's do another quick before after here. Here's 
here's before, here's after. It looks pretty good, but let's open the face palette here. You can see it added face light, which is one of my favorite tools in here because all it does is it acts like somebody had a reflector and just brightens up the face a little bit. We don't have any actual face slimming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this up. Now, this can get out of control really fast. In fact, if you crank it all the way up, it just starts to look fake and not very realistic or cartoony. But let's set this around, I don't know, 18, 19, somewhere in there. Quick before and after and you can see that that just slimmed it just enough. I really like that, I think that looks good. Now, I mentioned earlier that the shadows in here and the way this is set up, her eyes just kind of get swallowed a little bit and she's got really pretty eyes. And so one of the new technologies that I absolutely love in here is Iris AI. And so what we can do is in the eyes, original is selected. In other words, it hasn't made any modifications. Well, I can go in here and select, I can change the color of her eye. I can do something crazy like make it a cat. We're not gonna do that. I just want it to be hazel. So we're gonna go down to hazel and the visibility looks pretty good here's a quick before and after brought it out a little bit it's very subtle but I want to bring it out a little more so I'm gonna crank this up just a little bit and that brings it out we'll go around 91 let's bring it down 90 or so uh, for the next one I can do flare and what this does is it brings a little bit of reflection to the eyes and again you can crank this all the way up and she starts to look a little phony I don't want it that hot I'm gonna bring this down to around I don't know, 49 or so and now I've got the eyes coming out and I got a little bit of color in there and I think that looks really good so that is essentially the edits that I want to do the face the other one I'm gonna do I'm gonna zoom back out a second is we can go into body and we can actually do some shaping on the body because the artificial intelligence realizes this this is a human being it knows where the face is it knows where the body is I don't want to do too much um, it's just not a very flattering lens that I used for this portrait it has to do with the angle I shot her at so I just want to bring it in just a little bit so I'm going to turn body up to 30 and or so let's go yeah around 30 looks pretty good and it just slims her up just a little bit so quick before and after before after perfect love it next thing we're going to do is i am going to go into essentials it did correct the color cast if i go under color you can see it did remove some of that blue color cast so i didn't have to do that at all but there's another one that i really like in here and if i go under landscape it's called golden hour and this is a slider that does a bunch of things with light under the hood but you know what golden hour is is it's the hour when the sun starts to go down and you get a really beautiful gold light we can add some of this to this image so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring golden hour up just a little bit i don't want to go crazy with it and it's going to relight that just a little bit looking really good there about 25 that looks really good totally happy with that and then one last thing I want to do is I want to give just a little ambience in here something to give it a little bit of lift I think the sidewalk in the back it's cool but I would just like some ambience there so one thing I can do is if I go under the creative tab we have atmosphere as one of our palettes now we can do fog with this and I can just crank up a bunch of fog in the scene which looks okay but one thing that's really cool here is when we can now have this depth slider so luminar AI is depth aware it creates a depth map based on a two-dimensional image and I'll talk about how this works in a second but what we can do is because it knows where the background is the foreground is it does this with perspective where objects are placed I can do some fancier stuff with this so one thing I want to do is go down to the next tab which is layered fog and this is going to be a little bit more realistic and a little less just here's a bunch of fog and so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn that up uh, let's, let's go pretty high with this so we can see where it is so I'm going to go clear up to about 82 and you can see that it's right above the sidewalk now if I increase the depth on this you're going to see that it moves it around it moved it into the foreground well I don't want the fog up with her I just want it behind her a little bit so we're going to bring that back dial it back and it may be a little bright we can lower the lightness let's bring that down about halfway so we just get a little bit of lift here so really quick I think I'm done with this let's do a quick before and after here's before here's after looks pretty good let's talk about AI or artificial intelligence so what is that that's a term that's used a lot today and I've seen a lot of misconceptions about what it actually does to help you with editing of images I've seen people say well all of a sudden we're allowing a robot to take over and it's going to take all the creativity and all the soul out of the work that I produce and that couldn't be further from the truth I think it's important to have a discussion about AI to talk about how this will enhance what it is that you're working on think for just a second about the traditional way we edit images so an image comes up on the computer screen but it still requires user input to tell it what to do so you bring the image up and the software does not care what the image is it doesn't know what the objects are in the image it has no concern about that whatsoever it just sees it as pixels and they're different light levels and different colors and it makes up the image you have to tell it what to do so if you want to go in and say I need the exposure to be lowered you're going to use a slider to do that probably or if you say I want to put some curves and change the contrast you have to know how to use the curves tool where to put the 
point so on and so forth. This is fine, but it creates a lot of repetitive tasks that we as photographers do over and over when we're editing our images that ends up being probably arguably a waste of time after a while. Now there are auto adjustments. You just click the auto button and then it'll kind of guess at it. But what's interesting about AI is it's much more object or subject aware. And so it becomes more powerful with suggestions that it can make to you while you're editing your images. So let's take an object for an example. Let's just pick something at random. Let's say a hamburger. You can tell it's about lunchtime and you and I both know what a hamburger is. Meat, cheese, bun. It's three different objects that kind of come together and in a certain configuration, but we also know variations. We know a hamburger when we see it. If you're a vegetarian, I bet you know how to avoid a hamburger, but we have a different experience because we know what a hamburger is. It's food. It's something that we've seen in different light and different angles, different shapes, different sizes. Well, software does not inherently know what a hamburger is. However, with AI or artificial intelligence, what I can do is I can take maybe several hundred images of hamburgers from different angles and different perspectives and you can put that into the software and it will run an algorithm to learn to see those patterns and eventually it will start to understand what a hamburger is and so this is object recognition but this is just the start and this is how we know something becomes more powerful when it is object aware in the case of luminar ai it recognizes things like human beings people faces eyes body types it recognizes landscapes it's able to create an actual 3D depth map out of a 2D image by using things like understanding perspective or object replacement, repetition, anyway, so on and so forth. There's a lot of interesting technology that happens behind the scenes. Then we can do things like we can actually make changes to the face or the body, and those are really difficult to make look realistic because they start to look cartoonish really quick. Luminar does an amazing job at this. So in the context of Luminar AI, there's actually multiple artificial intelligence technologies under the hood that do very specific tasks, which end up saving you an enormous amount of time and it makes editing images a lot of fun. As I showed you in the portraits example, you could use body AI or face AI to gently sculpt or refine a portrait. We were able to bring the eyes back and really make them pop using the iris AI. And there's also the skin AI, which is going to remove blemishes and problems with too much texture in the skin. And if you've ever done fashion types of retouching in traditional editors, you know that this is something that can take an enormous amount of time. You're able to do this with just moving a couple sliders in Luminar AI. It's pretty amazing. If you're working with landscapes, you can add depth and detail to skies using atmosphere AI, which we looked at earlier. You add this to a sky, combine that with sky enhancer, you're going to get a beautiful range of color and contrast. You can transform a photo and add a whole new sky in seconds using sky AI, which is the old AI sky replacement, which actually allows you to completely change out the sky with any of the images that are built in, or you can even use your own images. You can also bring warmth with golden hour. We talked about that a little bit before, and I've used sun rays a lot in the past, which is a lot of fun. If you're looking to get more detail and texture, then structure AI is something you want to definitely look at. It's not just sharpening an image. It really is bringing out details, which is really amazing the amount of control that you get. Then there's accent AI, which just gives you the perfect exposure and balance of color. And then there is composition AI, which is actually really interesting. So let's go back to my original example here. And I'm going to use composition AI. And to get there, we're going to go back under the essentials tab here. And the first palette is composition. We're going to go ahead and select that. Now, what it's going to do is you can see it's got the handles and I can move this around. And, you know, I was obviously thinking rule of thirds when I shot this. I put her face there, but there's other ways you can render out rule of thirds. And again, if you feed this enough images like the hamburger example, it's going to start to recognize what's going to be a more pleasing composition. And so it's going to make some suggestions based on that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and select composition. We're going to click that button there. It's going to take just a second to think and it's going to reframe my composition. If I want to adjust that, I can, but but it cropped out some information that really wasn't needed on the left-hand side over here, this other lamppost. Brought it in. We still kind of have a rule of thirds alignment here. It's not hard and fast, but I kind of like that actually. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to apply that. And now we have a composition suggestion based on images that have been put into the algorithm. And this is kind of outstanding. And so if you're not sure sometimes, it's a really good tool to go in and kind of check things. You can always revert it back or you can make adjustments if you really want something to be a certain way. But again, this is all about a workflow that saves time. We use a template-based approach. We're able to edit parameters using various AI technologies that are under the hood. And we have a really interesting and outstanding software application in the end. Luminar AI is available for pre-order right now. So it's a 
good time to save some money. And so if you buy it at a special introductory price, you get a license to run it on two devices. You also get a set of free 50 high resolution images for sky replacement, which is very cool. And there's no subscription. It's just a one-time payment, so I think you should check it out. Give them some love. I would love to know what you guys think, so visit the link. It's below this video. Drop me a comment. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, later.